It's always fun to make your own cloud. I've got the new QNAP TS233 in the Gadget Lab. The folks at QNAP sent it to me for a test drive, and I also need to throw a thumbs up to Seagate for supplying a pair of Iron Wolf NOS drives so I could take this thing for that test drive. This is such an easy build. If you're interested in network storage solutions, I've been really happy with boxes like these. I've been running a TS332X for over two years now with the only downtime coming from short firmware updates. Now this TS233, actually, okay, hold on a brief tangent. I'm probably gonna swap those numbers in my mouth at some point. So pardon any mistakes or weird edits that you might see around the product name. It's the exact reversed name of the box that I own and I am but a mush-mouthed human. The TS-233 is a two-bay network-connected box. You pop in a pair of hard drives, either spinning disk or solid state, plug it into a router, and you turn it on. This is a really easy build. Where someone might have more customization and control over making their own NOS with selected computer parts, this is about as streamlined as we can make it. It's literally one bottom screw and then toolless cages for the drives to live in. I really appreciate that this is small. This is a slim case, but it's not too small. There's some smaller pre-built dual drive solutions out there, but cooling can be problematic. My uncle gave up on a two drive solution that kept overheating on him. You don't want that with your data backup. We're given the drives just a little bit of extra space and with a high mounted cooling fan, this has delivered better performance and better thermals over the two weeks that I've run the box. And it's a pretty clean look, you know, operational lights on the front with a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. I can't wait until we can all move on to USB 4 just to clean up the naming on USB 3. Under the power button is also a handy one button backup. If you plug a fast drive into the USB 3 and push this, it initiates some kind of fast copy. You get to customize, it's either copying from the external drive to the NAS or vice versa. That's a handy option if you want to back up quickly, if you need to migrate, or if you just want some extra redundancy. All right, then on the back, we've got the gigabit LAN port and dual USB 2 above the little power connector. The 233 is powered by a quad core ARM SOC, another area where I think small business and home office boxes are getting exciting. This is a similar chip to what might be in a lower mid-ranger phone. Totally inadequate for a larger company infrastructure, but it's kind of a sweet spot for smaller data needs, especially balancing performance against power draw. I've been running that 332 for two years that has a slightly beefier, but very similar ARM processor and performance has been excellent for home office use. You're regularly handling two phone backups while streaming content as a media server, and I'm still able to edit and render 4K video directly off the NOS on my home workstation at the same time. The 233 falls into roughly the same category where I would not be concerned about compute power for similar applications. But with less RAM and only gigabit network support, you might struggle matching concurrent 4K video streams. I had 1080p Blu-ray rips streaming to three TVs in our home and a 4K video streaming to my desktop at the same time. I think you're in good shape for most home office work and play situations. If you're still worried, and it assures you, the CPU cores in this box are very similar to what you might find in a 4K streaming dongle solution like a Chromecast with Google TV. That's plenty of horsepower for high level multimedia applications with a lower power profile. I really feel ARM is the way to go now until your needs grow, until your needs are more demanding and you need to support more people. And there is a nifty little trick on this SOC where QNAP has added an NPU, a neural processing unit. That's a specific piece of hardware designed to do things like facial recognition. So when you're organizing your photos, you can train it to very quickly find specific people in your photo backups. It's a fun little perk which ARM SOCs on phones have been using for a couple years now. The thing that's gonna make or break a network solution is software. It's not hard dumping some drives in a box, but controlling those drives 
requires the good software. Again, pulling from my experiences on the 332 and setting up the 233, I really like the QNAP QTS interface. You log in through a browser and you get a desktop style layout with clear notifications and alerts. Power users might be a little frustrated by some of the handholding. Like there's almost always an easy first glimpse before you dive into more granular information and control. But again, I feel for a home or small office setup, you're not likely employing a robust IT department. I am my own IT. Sometimes I need a little handholding. Ultimately really clean. And this also helps with some of the more advanced use like installing other services. On any solution like this, I throw on Plex, but the App Center is very well stocked for folks to get up and running quickly. QNAP has their own in-house apps for music and video streaming and they work well, but you're not tied to only using their apps. If you'd rather use another solution, you're free to do so. But this is also where I have to deliver some design kudos. Over the last two years, the QTS interface has improved significantly. New features have come to my current NAS and performance has improved, which also rolls over to mobile management. The phone apps from a couple years ago were functional if they looked a little like stripped down FTP managers, and now they look more like what a modern phone application should resemble. Not quite as easy to use as a cloud storage app like OneDrive or G Drive, but you get a ton more control over the equipment and the accounts that can access the drive. And you've got the same kind of share a link options that a cloud storage solution would offer too. And that's maybe where we do, where we should do a little comparison shopping. Thanks to the folks at Seagate, I've got two six terabyte drives in this box. And I set this up to be redundant. So while there's actually 12 terabytes of capacity, we're only going to use six in case one of those drives fails. Iron Wolf drives are great. Eventually all drives will fail. Doing a very little shopping you know, between the enclosure and the drives, we'd be looking at roughly $500, somewhere in that ballpark. Not difficult finding a pre-built dual drive solution around this storage capacity for less. But those all-in-one boxes are rarely as robust or as easy to maintenance, at least in my experiences. If you move up to a more traditional two-bay network attached solution, you're often in a similar price point for similar performance. This is striking out right at that sweet spot for getting you into something a little bit more robust with a little bit more control and able to support more users before you go full on corporate grade. So then we should also take a look at cloud storage options. And the pricing is a little trickier to manage. You pay Google 10 bucks a month or $100 a year, you can get two terabytes of cloud storage for a user. If your needs top out at two TB, it would take you roughly three years of subscription costs before a NAS would be cheaper than pure cloud. But the issue with cloud, subscriptions above two terabytes start getting pricier if they exist at all. Right here, right now, I've got six terabytes in this box. Considering the content we can make with phones, the size of movies and music we might want to back up or store, and how much stuff a small family can collect, six TB isn't as huge as it used to be. My daughter is six, her whole life has been documented in the 4K. Trying to shop business cloud options above two terabytes is a little harder. Google doesn't even list that publicly on Drive for Work anymore. If we divide the storage per user, that's three separate two terabyte accounts, $300 a year. That means this $500 box is already saving you money over a cloud subscription by the end of the second year of operation. I'm over two years on my three bay NAS, and it has 18 terabytes of available storage. The math on cloud storage for that, yeah, it wasn't great. <laughs> Not great at all. And this storage is way more useful locally where I can stream video and edit video when I'm on my home network. That's the thing I love about a DIY cloud. When you're out and about, it's not much different than G Drive or iCloud. In fact, this might even be a little slower if you're on cable broadband like I am. You're at the mercy of your home network upload speeds. But when you're at home over Wi-Fi or over Ethernet, the connection speeds are just as fast because you're directly connected to that box over your router. So it's so much more robust than a big USB drive hooked up to a family PC because any phone 
any tablet, any computer can access it locally on the network all at the same time. And you can set up auto backups just as easily as you can from the cloud. As soon as my wife is on any Wi-Fi and she's charging her phone, her phone will automatically upload all of her newest photos and videos to our NAS. She doesn't have to touch anything. So I'm a big fan where I was critically disappointed in some other enclosures. And I was, I was really close to just building my own solution out of an old PC motherboard. QNAPs have been running flawlessly. And this new 233 looks like it's cut from similar cloth to what I've been using. So much so that I'm gonna be shooting a follow-up to this video uh, to this hands-on in this first look where I set this box up for my parents. They're both very tech savvy individuals, but they're backing up an old MacBook to an even older USB drive. Their needs aren't nearly as heavy as mine for content creation, but they need a safer long-term storage solution for family media. And we're looking at digitizing years of old film prints and negatives. So we need a safe place to store and share those scans with other family members. So stay tuned, we're gonna give this a real world test soon, we're gonna see how they like it. Once again, shout out to QNAP for letting me take this for a spin, thumbs up to Seagate for sending out some drives, and I will of course leave links down below on both the TS-233 and Seagate Iron Wolf drives for folks to check out if they're curious. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. If you're checking out the links in my descriptions, if you're buying some merch, or if you're hitting my website, somegadgetguy.com, or you could also consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, that's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. True story. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.